again. It's a first down. Jennings with a great move, and he's going to score. Up here in the box. Everyone else behind them is in straight man. Got a free. Things getting out of hand. Wow. Moody, extra point, up and good. It's 35. Uh, Purdy in his return to the place where he tore touchdowns for Purdy. And the offense has just that we were talking about there, Greg. With Hurts being evaluated for a concussion, you obviously wins over Dallas and Philadelphia. And the Cowboys are on fire. And if you don't watch it, we could be a wild card team ourselves. Big change. Yeah, things happen fast in this league. And well, now they got to go on the road where Dallas is really good. So a lot of storylines going to come out of this later this year. They've probably got the easiest schedule remaining of those teams. Nine wins are about to get to it. Uh, Scott on the kickoff. Here is the headlines brought to you by Uber Eats. Delivering those headlines and some of the early games. How about the Texans? I mean, it's, it's an incredible story. D'Amico Ryan's coach of the year right now. They win again. They end Denver's five-game streak. Lions had a 21-0 lead. They had to sweat a little bit, but they won at their ninth of the year. And the Cardinals upset the Steelers. And those were the early headlines today. So Marcus Mariota is in for the Eagles with Hurts being evaluated for a concussion. His first throw is up top to Devontae Smith. And he's got the catch. Mariota, first year in Philly, coming over as a backup. Spent last year in Atlanta and then didn't finish the year, left the team. He had a knee injury. He was benched at that time, a little bit of a strange circumstance. But now his ninth year in the league and getting his first action as an Eagle. Underneath, tipped, and boy, Kevin Givens almost tipped it and intercepted it himself. And there's a penalty flag on the far side of the field. Steve Wilkes, the defensive coordinator, not happy. Yeah, he's, Steve Wilkes is saying the ball was tipped. There is no foul yep. on the play. Second down. Yeah, so they're going to pick that flag up because they're saying once the ball gets tipped, P.I. and contact down the field is all off the table. Take a look here. You can see Ambry Thomas. He's guarding. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's hard to tell. Did that happen before or after? The the initial flag for the pull on the jersey from Avery Thomas. It's hard to tell from that angle. Mario swings it out to Swift and tackled up around the 45 yard line. That's Warren Burks making that play. The thing about the 49ers and how they're trending right now, right? Coming into today, they've won three in a row. But just look at the other teams they've played, the powerhouses in the NFC. They blew out Dallas and they are blowing out Philadelphia. I mean, that's beyond impressive. Mario on third. Runs away from pressure. Fakes looks to the run. Diving forward. He's going to be a little bit short up to midfield. Obviously, the Eagles in go for it mode now. Yeah, and the question is do they have as much confidence in the sneak with Marcus Mariota like they do with Jalen Hurts? Obviously, if he, Jalen Hurts is that quarterback, this is a no brainer. Everybody in the stadium could call the play. Have to imagine. Oh, they're trying to do a late sub here. Now they're going to hold it up. Oh, Jalen Hurts back on the field. He's getting a standing ovation as he comes back to his bench. And so the brotherly shove without Jalen Hurts. And it still works. Looks like he's got it. We'll see. Close. The official at the bottom of the screen, I think, has his foot marking it short. Well, right there, you're right, but. All right, well, the official at the top of the screen, his left foot had it right on that red line. They're going to bring the chains out and measure it. It's amazing how accurate they can be. It's not like they have the red line down on the field. Oh, it's, <laughs> yeah, the official at the top, he gave Mariota a little bit more forward progress than the official did at the bottom. Let's see. Well. Apparently not. Yeah, Pop James. Apologize for the language, but <laughs> and look who's coming back in. Wow! So obviously he cleared the protocol, and that's that's the most important news. Absolutely. Forget how today ends up. Number one at quarterback, Philadelphia knows their their chances of going against anybody in this league are 
are great. So the fact that he cleared protocol and he's back under center, or in this case, in the gun. So Hurts back in there. And let's see what he can do. Rolls away from pressure again. Going to take off and run and go outside and out of bounds there around the 45 yard line. Greg, I'm amazed you think about that drive when the Eagles made it a one possession game, right? Play with everything's going crazy, a couple big penalties, Drake Greenlaw ejected. Dom DeSandro, the head of security, ejected Philadelphia. Bedlam in the stadium. Hurts near side. Devontae Smith has it. Right around another first down. We'll see where they spot it. And then 49ers go bang, bang. Debo Samuel, 48-yard touchdown, and it was lights out. Yes, the difference in one third down stop. Philly's got the crowd on their feet. They're one third down stop away from being right back into it. San Francisco converts. They keep the drive alive. And as you said, Debo Samuel takes it to the house. It's The game can flip like that. Here's Hurts. All day, can't find it. Now he's got A.J. Brown across the middle and inside the 20 for a big game. And that's another first down as the Eagles hurry up to the line. Yeah, just another great example. We showed you earlier in the game, A.J. Brown just staying in phase with his quarterback. He starts on the dig route, and he just feels green grass. Jalen Hurts buys some time, and he's able to find his number one target. They have to continue to operate quickly. They're in two-minute mode. Obviously being down three scores the rest of this fourth quarter. They got to maximize the time, maximize possessions. Hurts, pressure coming, steps away. Throws far side Brown again, makes the catch inside the 15. Brown's over 100 yards, by the way. This is eighth catch of the day. Under seven minutes to go. Yeah, they need scores and they need them in a hurry. And then the question's going to be, you know, it gets into the when do you take your chance at a two-point conversion, right? There's a lot of a lot of conversation out there. Would you take your two-point conversion at the end? I think you take it as early as you can. You want to know how many possessions are remaining left in the game. Hurts. Pressure from Gregory throws. Smith makes the catch. First down, first and goal. Make it Watkins, excuse me. 16, not six. Of course, Watkins has it. And it's first and goal, Eagles. I just don't like the fact that on every drop back, it seems like Jalen Hurts is forced to move off his spot. You know, sometimes it's pressure induced, sometimes it's at his own doing. I'd like to see him just be a little more comfortable in the pocket, going through his progression, and let his offensive line protect that spot. Need three scores are looking for one of them. Stands in here, now running away, pressure at his heels, throws dropped. Last week in overtime, he had the walk-off touchdown. Jalen Hurts did on the quarterback draw. Can't imagine with him just coming out of protocol. Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni want to put him the ball in his hand as a designed runner, especially down 22 here late. You got to imagine this ball continues to stay in the air as they try to claw back. 12th play of this drive. And Lane Johnson got an early start. All start, offense number 65. Five yard penalty, second down. I think he's allowed one bad play a game, right? I think that's probably. Usually you don't even fair. get that. <laughs> you know, essentially, we just showed that stat that there were 17 pressures on Jalen Hurts. And I wonder how you view it because it hurts. There, there were points in this game he's had a lot of time. But the pressure comes after three and a half seconds. Second and goal. Looking to stay alive and stay in this game. Four man pressure here. It's got time. Lofted for end zone. A.J. Brown is taken down. There's a penalty. Looks like that'll put him at the one. Yeah, Diamandor Lenore. He just tackles A.J. Brown. He's lined up one on one in the slot. Man coverage, and he's just all over A.J. Brown. And Pass interference, defense number two. Ball is placed in spot of the foul. Automatic first down. And you see Hurts, he kind of takes a shot here at the end from Bosa. 
determined that he was kind of thrown into the legs. Of course, the defender's not allowed to hit the quarterback in the legs unless they deem the offensive player threw the defender down into the ground. First and goal. Hurts tries to get to Brown, knocked away. Embry Thomas read that well. I think it's interesting. You know, we just talked about their reluctance to use him as a runner. And again, we're speculating. We, you know, they very well could go quarterback sneak here. They went, it was a little RPO read. He could have shovel passed it to the tight end or taken the flat to A.J. Brown. But we saw them on first and goal from the two earlier in the half go quarterback sneak first and second down from this exact same yardage. So far here, they have it. Second and goal. Now comes pressure. Hurts floating in for the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown. Devontae Smith. And they're going to go for two. Yeah, they're going to go for two here. The idea is old convention of wisdom. We'll get to that here in a second. Just take a look here. Devontae Smith just kind of playing ball here. Backyard just staying alive against Lenore. Nice job. Old conventional wisdom, old school football was, you always waited to the end when you were down eight to go for two. But that's kind of flipped. Teams want to know, at some point, I have to go for two. So they go for it now on the earlier side so that they can use their timeouts and the two-minute warning to manufacture extra possessions, knowing how many scores am I still remaining down. They're trying to make it a 14-point game. Don't do that. <laughs> Knocked away and they won't get it. Fred Warner got a piece of that two point conversion, no good. 49ers in control in Philly. Niners in control, 35 14. Eagles just scored, but obviously, time only 5.33 to go. They're going to try an onside kick here. Elliott will kick it up there. It's received by McCaffrey, and the 49ers will take over. Next Sunday, it's a big day of football coming your way on Fox. Rams take on Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. Seahawks, or, or the Hawks, Seahawks or Hacks. <laughs> Seahawks battle Christian McCaffrey and the Niners. Check for your game in the area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Well, Seattle's got a tough two-step. They've got San Francisco, who they just lost to a week ago, and they got Philly after that. So they, they could use a win. Obviously, the Niners will be chasing that number one seed. And the Rams are winning today over Cleveland by a point. They're, they're in the playoff mix. So that's interesting. Now for the 49ers, we get a penalty. Maybe moving back five yards. All start. Offense number 71. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. Trent Williams you're talking about the rare mistake on Lane Johnson. I guess Trent's allowed <laughs> yeah. one a game too, they're, huh? They're, they're each allowed one, so now they're done. They're not allowed to make a mistake. The rest of the game, and I mean, how impressive are those guys? I mean, we spend so much time watching the ball and the quarterbacks, and rightfully so. But man, when you get to watch some of these high-level, elite offensive tackles, offensive linemen work, Trent Williams, Lane Johnson, it's these guys are impressive. Here's McCaffrey on the pitch, who just keeps on chugging. And works his way down to the 46. Big day for him today. And the Eagles call a timeout. Their first of the half. We'll call one as well. 35-19, two possession game, 49ers. Bulls at Dallas. Philly won the first meeting a few weeks ago here in Philadelphia. So Dallas, they win next week. They'll even up the division, be tied with Philadelphia. And then it's just a race to the finish for the number one seed. But you see the schedule after that. The Eagles have Seattle and then a relatively winnable last few games. Dallas has Buffalo, Miami, Detroit. So next week will be monstrous as Debo Samuel. Uh oh, Debo Samuel, one man to beat. He's going to beat him. Touchdown, 49ers. And he waves goodbye to the fans in Philly. 
Now, I'm not sure if San Francisco, if they can bottle this and this, these last couple weeks, and especially here today against arguably the best team in the league, if they can keep this thing going, especially offensively, I'm not sure what the answer is. It's just a little tunnel screen. The entire offensive line acting as an escort. He's untouched. You just don't see that a lot in the NFL. Be untouched on those screens. That's about as well-timed and well-executed as you can get. Debo Samuel, two receiving touchdowns. He's got a rushing touchdown. And after all the talk and all the rematch, he and the 49ers have backed it up, coming back in here with a healthy team, and they have done whatever they've wanted on offense. And look, Greg, here's the deal. Like, we we knew San Francisco was good, and we knew what the NFC looked like, right? We, But, man, I, it's like you said, now they're, they've blown out Dallas. They've blown out Philly. I, that's pretty tough to do. Yeah, imagine that. And that's the bookends. And then somehow in the middle of there, they lost three games and had a bye. It, yeah. It's been a very weird season, but... This San Francisco, this team, both sides of the ball, this is as dominant a performance as we've seen amongst the elite teams in the league. And, and listen, we knew Philadelphia coming into this game after the emotional wins the last couple weeks were going to take their toll. I think a little of that is the case here, but can't take anything away. San Francisco, they're playing as well, if not better than anybody in the entire National Football League. They've got Seattle next week. We'll be there in Santa Clara for that one, Greg. They just beat the Seahawks on Thursday night of Thanksgiving. And then Cardinals, Baltimore, Washington, and L.A. to finish out their schedule as they chase home field advantage. And remember, home field advantage, it's not only that, it's the only team to get the first round by. You only have to play two games to get to the Super Bowl. And it'll be a race to it, no question, after today's result. As Boston Scott is tripped up. So that's the deal for the 49ers. Now, how about for Philly? You're talking about, look, they're, they're in this gauntlet, which we knew about, right? Their schedule... I mean, this is, we knew coming, Dallas, Kansas City, Buffalo, San Francisco, Dallas, Seattle. You knew that was going to be a tough schedule. So if they lose today, which they're going to, they're going to be 3-1 and one in that mix. But now all of a sudden, a monstrous game next week. If Dallas wins, you're all tied up. How do you view them now going, went from 10-1 and one to, man, they could be the clear-cut number one. They're still obviously very good. Yeah, I don't think my opinion of Philly changes. I think we knew that four-game stretch. If you said to Nick Sirianni over these four weeks, you were going to be three and one playing against the elite teams in the league. They didn't call that incomplete. You know, I think he would have signed up for it. Of course, he'd love to win them all, right? Every coach wants to win them all. But I think here you are, three and one. You're in the gauntlet of your season. And just showed you as they get through these next couple weeks, it starts to easing up a little bit. I think they're fine. I think obviously Jalen Hurts coming back in healthy to finish the game is the number one factor. And listen, San Francisco is a great team. This, this is not like you, you had a letdown game. They knew this was a challenge. It's been an emotionally taxing few weeks, and uh, they just ran into a team that was better today. Here's Hurts over the middle. Kenny Gainwell makes a catch, makes a couple miss, and sprints his way up to the 30. Yeah, now it really all will come down to next week and how the last month will go. I mean, you think about being 10 and 1 and being, okay, number one seed right now, to all of a sudden now losing that and dropping out of the division lead potentially. So next week in Dallas, Sunday night, monstrous. And the Cowboys playing maybe their best ball of the year, too. First, finish this one. Hurts running around. On the move and throws and. And it's Watkins who's got a completion. I think the, the other important thing to keep in mind, Kev, is you see this is a great ball here by Jalen Hurts on the run. Nice job by Watkins going down and securing it. But the, the thing we've seen time and time again in the NFL is just because San Francisco was the best team today against Philly, if they find themselves in a rematch down the road, whether it's here or in San Francisco, no telling how that next matchup goes. And I think that's the exciting nature of why this playoffs have so much excitement and so much drama. I'll tell you who feels good. That's 49ers general manager John Lynch. And, yeah, it doesn't obviously make up for not going to the Super Bowl last year when Purdy got hurt. But there's no question it feels pretty good to come out here, not only with a win, but a dominating W. And to see their offense just go possession after possession. Both controlled run game, explosive passing game. They really checked every box after the slow start with the first two possessions. And yeah, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan, they, they're going to be thrilled on this long flight back to San Francisco. I mean, six straight TDs for them on offense. 
That's as good as it gets ever in any week. Hurts on second and ten. Kinlaw chasing after him, and he's just going to throw it away. The 49ers have scored over 30 points eight times now this year. And you wonder when when they're playing like this, when they've got all their parts and all their pieces healthy, how do you defend it? And I think what's unique about them, there's always concern going into the postseason for these passing teams, right? Passing wins you games in the regular season. And then there's a little bit of a shift to be able, the ability to run the ball, to be a little more smash mouth, play outside in the conditions, in the cold. That's really what San Francisco is. And that's just a hard playoff matchup. Hurts gets away from Chase Young. No one's open, just looking for anything here. Now comes back way across the field. Boston Scott, who leaked open. Boston Scott's got a first down. And he gets down inside the 30. I mean, Hertz looked at everyone that time, but Scott went all the way across the field, and they convert. This is the point in the game where you just hope you have Jalen Hurts on your fantasy team. He's just going to continue to throw it every down. And Got to imagine this San Francisco pass rush is just tired of chasing him around all day. They've got a few backups in. Fred Warner's on the sideline. A few other guys, but they've been chasing Jalen Hurts around the field all game. And did it again there. Gets away from Bosa, throws on the run, and Gainwell. Did he hold on? Yep, he did. Getting some traction here. And so Eagles drive continues as 318 to go in this game. Well, they're going to hold the snap, which allowed Bosa to slowly jog off. And this play, the timing was just all messed up. Ball start, offense number 62, five-yard penalty, second down. Move them on back for the 49ers. Think how this feels for Brock Purdy, Greg, right? I mean, we started the broadcast. Aaron was telling you about what he felt in that championship game when he got hurt and tore his elbow on the opening possession. Remember, he came back in. And at that time, he finished the season on a flurry. 49ers thought they had a quarterback. Well, he comes back in his return. He's got four touchdowns. He's got the best passer rating in the NFL. He's in the discussion for MVP. Things have changed from going, well, maybe this guy can do it, to no, he can do it. Looks over the middle. Oh, my goodness. Lenore with an unbelievable hit, and Swift is slow to get up. Wow. Let's take a look here. It looked live like he led with his shoulder. I think that's a clean, hard hit. That's... That's the way they want defenders to play, below the helmet, lead with the shoulder, and that's just a tough one if you're on the offensive side. And good to see Swift being able to get up and get off the field. That's, that's a tough one. Hopefully he's okay. But just going back to Purdy as Swift goes off the field, I, I, you know, again, remember, he came on. We did his first start. They beat up Brady in the box, and... Obviously, it took him to the championship game, and they wondered what if. How do you feel about him now, a year later? Yeah, I think he's gone from a fun story initially. Right Here's Mr. Irrelevant that's coming into a Super Bowl contending team. He's got great talent around him, a great system to operate. I think we've quickly, in a little over a year, gone from a nice story that we didn't know how it was going to end to saying this is a long-term starting NFL quarterback on one of the best teams in the league since he took over. Another sack for the Niners as Hertz goes down. They see he's having some fun. Purdy with four touchdowns today. It'll bring up fourth down. After Kalia Davis gets the sack, his first. And now just matter running out of time. I think the story that sticks out that Kyle Shanahan told is he said over the bye week, you know, he felt like Brock was coming under some pressure, coming under some negative criticism, and he pulled him into his office, and he goes, he looked at me, and he had no idea what I was even talking about. He has no idea that there was anything negative being said about him. Devontae Smith tried to haul in a one-hander, but good coverage by Embry Thomas. 
And that'll all but do it once they get under the two-minute warning. Yep. Ambry Thomas, I mean, he has been in tight coverage all game, contesting, high-pointing the ball. His emergence and being able to move Diamandor Lenore, Steve Wilkes told us, we now have our three best corners on the field because of Thomas allowing us to move Lenore to that nickel slot corner. There you go. So Sam Darnold will get a couple snaps. 49ers take over. And they will have a chance to essentially run this out. And a resounding statement here in South Philadelphia today. Four touchdowns for Purdy. Three total for Debo Samuel. McCaffrey goes over 1,000 yards. 93 yards rushing for him and a whole host of stars for these 49ers. As we hit the two-minute warning, 49ers. It's their day today. Jason Kelsey, disgusted. John Lynch, feeling it. You today, I mean, really impressive stuff. Appreciate that. Yeah, I like it. If you're a 49ers fan, you like today too. 42 to 19. Goodness, they've been impressive. As Jordan Mason gets a carry there with under two to go. Coming up next, the OT presented by Ford. So stick around for that. I'll tell you what, Greg, what this result does makes the next month really fun because it's going to be all hands on deck, people trying to get that one seat. Absolutely. We're going to have the the honor of being able to call some of these big matchups down the stretch and tell you what coming into the season I think everyone thought the AFC that's where all the new young quarterbacks are and whatnot I'll tell you what I think the best teams in the league right now at the top are in the NFC and San Francisco might be number one sure looked like it today third down pitching on out to Mason and that will essentially do it first down You would think the Eagles would let this run at this point. Yeah, this, this one's a couple kneel downs and some handshakes. Oh, there's big, big stats from the Stars today. Brock Purdy returning to Philly, and he was awesome, especially after the first quarter where they had minus six yards. McCaffrey doing his thing as usual. And Debo Samuel, he probably talked the most trash, and boy, did he back it up, right? Wow. After the matchup last year, leading up to this game, and could he ask for a better performance from him? And his play, the 48-yard touchdown, when this turned into a game, that was the play of the yeah, game. Yeah, that was the tipping point of the entire game. Just when Philly felt like they got their energy, they got back into it. It was a third down failure to get off the field. And a couple plays later, Debo took it to the house. And that was all she wrote. Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers uh, have, sorry, won, have won four in a row. And those two having a conversation. And... So there's some talk with a couple star wide receivers. But this day belonged to George Kittle and the Niners. 42 to 19. Domination in Philly and Purdy was perfect. Back after this.